Almeida has a terribly timed mechanical, but his UAE teammates don't help him out. This was Volta Catalunya Stage 2, the big mountain showdown. Sorry about no video yesterday. I went to a race for once. I was in the Umber Visma team car, having a look at Roglic winning Stage 1 up close. But this was the Volta 2000 finish, 5 degrees on arrival, up over 2,100 metres. Pretty straightforward stage beforehand, just a warm-up climb the Col de Coube, which is like 5% average gradient. The final climb has about 11.5 k's to climb proper at 7.5%. It's a pretty hard climb, but Roglic is in the leader's jersey after winning that sprint yesterday in saint felix de Gijols. Big break went with Simon Kerr for EF Education Easy Post. Hessing back from injury, controlling that breakaway, which had Batili in it, Galvan, Asperen. And this is kind of a Giro talent rehearsal for many of these teams, particularly Quickstep and Jumbo Visma. Like Hessman, the young rider on Jumbo, is showing what he's got to try and get selected for that Jumbo Giro team, one would think. And same with, say, Van Wilder, of course, will go for Quickstep. But the lead up began into the climb. The climb had technically started, I think. Hey, to positioning Bernal, but really it's with 11.5 k's where it starts. And Car Fuga de la Fuga there has to go because they're getting caught pretty quickly by the lead outs from behind. Now, Jumbo Visma weren't setting it alight. Foss was clearly given a plan, or the, the idea was to set the tempo he wanted to because when Pauls goes to the front, he's going much quicker and, in fact, Foss doesn't take his wheel and that forces the Bahrain whole team to move up, Landa and Keplinger, who begins pacing as well, the new addition for Bahrain. And I cannot believe we were given this gem again. Landa hits us with the Col de la Lowe's Fear Face Part 2 memes abound on Twitter. But Almeida, near disaster for him. Perhaps he'd been given some strengthy intervals that he'd needed to catch up on for his, you know, for his training workouts, or perhaps the bike malfunctioned. Not a good time to have that problem when Pools is launching at Bernal dropped with Jimmy Anson's Carapaz dropped and Finn Fisher Black, who's having a good better season so far after the crash last year, bringing him back. But look here, Chavez sees Simon Kerr already brought back and he's launching. He gets the green light to go. And if you were watching the channel, subscribe down below if you haven't. But if you were a subscriber or watched in 2021, you will remember the Chavez attack in Catalonia 21 and Coos is launching after him. You'll remember on this very climb, he went after Bala and Adam Yates. He gets blocked a bit by pools and that checks his momentum and maybe he wouldn't have got to the wheel of Chavez anyway, but having to swerve didn't help. Almeida, who maybe had just come back, he's trying to get back on again. He it is dropped and Coos gets caught in a Chaspatat in between Chavez and Jack Haig pacing for Bahrain. But shouldn't one of the UAE riders drop back for Almeida? He came second in Torreno. He's in very, very good shape. It's not his fault. His gears or whatever stopped working. Now, Soler's up there on GC. He finished in the group yesterday. Yates lost 10 minutes. Again, he had a really bad crash. Not his fault either. But the reality is one of them, you would think, should drop back for the other for Almeida. And it'd probably be Yates given his GC position. But he didn't. He stayed in the group. Maybe he was hoping for a stage. Maybe Almeida didn't want him to drop back. And he's happy to do... Almeida thinks when Bade is dropped, which is to just choo-choo himself back on and try and do smooth average power. I don't know, but it seemed pretty curious to me. We've got Haig pacing. Quickstep, though, with Van Vilder, waited. This is the steep bit of the climb in particular, too. Now, Shikone, he's got no teammates. He's just got to follow his plans to go with even a Paul or Roglic, whichever one launches. But this gap is going out now. 26 seconds. It's going to go out to 30 seconds as Coos comes back into the group. And he isn't going to pace for Roglic because you know, Roglic has got the sprint advantage. He's also got the time advantage from yesterday. So he doesn't need to make this the hardest race possible. But on the flat section with 4Ks to go, the gap was even 35 seconds. That's where it peaked. And then Van Vilder took over a good pull for Remco, even a pull. Still a pretty big group. Got Lenny Martinez in there, Bouchard, Ben O'Connor, two from Bora, Hindley, and Outerbrooks. But Van Vilder, you'll probably see him as the last man for even a pull in the Giro. He strung it out a reasonable amount. He brought it back at maybe eight seconds, seven seconds before Landismo attacked. And I mean, good on Bahrain for trying and Lunda for going for the stage. Like, you can only try and they didn't really do anything wrong. But even if Paul was probably the strongest on the climb, that then drops Tarame. And when he counters, now it's really, really strung out. 1,900 meters to go, 20 seconds the gap. And Chaching Chavez all depends right now on even a pool. And he looks back, sees he has a gap, 
and keeps pacing. Whilst UAE got Soler chasing Avonapol's group with Roglic, got Yates just perched on the back of that group, 10 minutes back on GC, by the way, and Almeida just choo-chewing himself back al- along. At this point, Yates ain't winning the stage with him being dropped from the Avonapol group, and Almeida gets on the radio, and he... He must be saying, I would think, can someone drop back and, and help me? Rubio's caught in between, but they don't. And Almeida, I mean, Almeida also in, in other occasions has had the team ride for him and he kind of does his own thing anyway. So he might be a difficult guy to set a pace for because he wants to ride his own specific tempo and get back into the group. I don't know. But he won a stage in Catalonia last year and was really good. Even to pull attacks from the front, I don't really have a problem with the way even to pull like played the last 1500 meters from a big picture perspective, like keeping the pace high. So you can't get counted by the punchier uh, Primoz Roglic, but maybe the way he, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Chavez being up the road, he was worried about Chavez or he wanted the stage Because attacking from the front against this quality of opposition rarely works unless you're on a really, really, really high level. Almeida gets past the and even Paul goes with 500 meters to go. Maybe he didn't back his sprint because if you lead out with 500 meters to go at, a, at high altitude, you're going to have to have fantastic legs to beat Chicane and Roglic in the wheel. They finally gap Landa, Chavez, and I think Yates bringing back the group with Almeida, who gets onto Landa's wheel. You see this last right-hand bend, and Aiden Paul's already spent his bullets with a big attack, and then beginning his sprint from 500, he goes super wide, and you can see the angle now. Ciccone is carrying the most speed, Rolich a little bit sharp underneath him, and those two are going to battle it out for the sprint. Rolich seems to take a second to get on top of his gear, and he can't make it up to Ciccone, who comes across the left, makes sure he comes back across to the right, across Roglic. I'm um, not sure it would have changed the result. Anyway, with Ciccone taking what I would say is the best quality win of his career in terms of opposition defeated. Very, very impressive from the Italian who's in fantastic shape this season and also a nice result for Trek after the unfortunate crash and, and bad injuries to Cataldo yesterday. So happy to see them win. We've got another mountaintop finish tomorrow on La Molina. That will probably be a sprint, but low port later in the week. That is a nasty climb. We should see some decent gaps on that one. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, ciao.